Welcome back to the second hour of tonight's show. Is it just me, or does that song just get better with each listen? It's brilliant. I'm sitting here, and that's the one good thing about you you're sitting here. Obviously, the other good thing is I get to talk to you good people. Um, but I sit here, and you can just crank up stuff like that through the studio monitors. It just sounds wonderful. It sounds absolutely fantastic. Uh, that is Yes, and that is from the uh, from the EP, From a Page, and that is the brilliant uh, to the moment. Um now, this whole hour is dedicated mainly to that EP. Um, one of the people who took part in it, Oliver Wakeman, asked, as I spoke to him a couple of weeks ago, and you can hear the full interview in probably about five or six minutes. Um, but I've also got a couple of extra tracks on, the, uh, on this hour tonight. <laughs> WCRFM. Okay, you're listening to 101.8 WCRFM. It gives me great pleasure to say that on the line I've got Oliver Wakeman. How are you, Oliver? I'm very well, thank you. Yourself? Yeah, not too bad. Not too bad. I'm I'm wandering towards the three quarter part of my day. I've got a live show a bit later on tonight, but uh, I'm I'm all I'm all prepared anyway. So. Oh, good. Uh, Welcome back to the show. Uh, I worked out actually. I think the last time you were on the show was probably about four or five years ago, around the time you did the album with Gordon Giltrap. Yeah, Ravens and Lullabies. Yeah, yeah that'd Wonder- be bad. Yeah, about 2013, 20, yeah, 2013 that was. Yeah. yeah, wonderful album, wonderful album. I dug it out the, the other day for the first time in ages and thought, that's a cracking album, really is good stuff. Oh, that's good. I was hoping to get a re-release next next year if I can get everything sorted properly because it, um, it sort of went out of print um, about oh, about a year ago. So it's due for due for reissue. So I'm um, hopefully at some point next year we'll, we'll get it back out again. Oh, superb, superb. Um, yes, I've uh, recently released the box set from a page. It contains the live album from Leon in 20, uh, 2009 uh, and also a four-track EP con- uh, containing uh, previously unreleased tracks from that area of the band. First of all, I've got to say, what a fantastic collection of tracks that is! Oh, good. I'm glad you like them. Yeah, they seem to be they seem to be getting quite a good response from people. Actually, it's it's it's, it's, it's very rewarding. It's, it's, I mean, the reaction has been really good to them, hasn't it? Have you, has you been pleased by the the reaction? I have. It's um, it's it's one of those weird weird things where you you sort of I spent quite a lot of time on these tracks. I mean, the background behind it is uh, I left the band in 2011 when uh, Trevor Horn came on board and basically wanted to work with some material that he had. Uh, and so took the band in the direction, um, which was working with him and, and with Jeff Downs. And so after my, my three, three years or so with the band sort of came to an end. Um, and then when I left there with the band, they they said, "Well, we're not going to put this music on on the record. You you can take it take it take it with you." Um, and so I sort of had these pieces of music that we had actually worked quite far up in the studio. We'd spent a long time arranging them, come up with ideas, and recording all the parts. And I sort of came came home and just put the discs on a shelf and didn't really think about them for a while. Then went off and like you said, went off and did the works with Gordon Giltrap and did two or three years touring with him. Um, uh, and it was only when um, Chris died that I suddenly thought, Do you know what, I've got that music on the, on the shelf. It's never really been, I've never even listened to it to see what we even recorded. You know, you, you're in a studio and you're recording and you're putting down track after track and overdub after overdub, but I'd never actually gone through it all. Uh, and I spent some time just going through the, the, the track Gift of Love, which started off as a track that Chris and I sort of wrote. Yeah. Um, and so I started working on these, these this track and, and sort of pulling it together. And the more and more time I spent on it. I, I sort of was really enjoying it, and I thought, you know, what? this is this is a really lovely track. And I put some more keyboards, some more vocally bits on it, and worked on the arrangement. Uh, and it was purely because obviously Chris had passed, that I felt the need to do something with it. And it was never intended really to, to ever go anywhere. It was literally something for me to have as a record of the fact that we'd recorded. And it was quite nice having a, an unknown yes piece just in my computer that only I knew about. Um, so yeah, so that, that, that's that's how that piece sort of developed. And then I tweeted about it. I think I just did a tweet. I was just listening to this sort of yes track that I recorded with with band. And that's when the yes manager came on board and said, "Can we have a chat?" And that led to you know pulling out the other tracks that, that we'd recorded and finishing them off. And um, I sort of went down and had a chat with Steve Howe, and <clears throat> we agreed on how the, the project should come out. Uh, and yeah, and like you say, the reaction has, has, has been is quite phenomenal. Really, the the, the positive out pouring from people has been, has, you know, as I said, has been very rewarding. I mean, to be honest, I mean, when I heard the tracks, um, the first track I heard was To The Moment, um, which I have to say is... <laughs> 
<laughs> first time I heard it, I just went, I'm sorry. And I listened to it and then I put it back on again. And then I played it about four or five times. And every time I heard it, I just got more and more into it. And I just thought, this is fantastic. <laughs> it grabs you straight away. And I just got it just got better and better and better with each track. And and when you listen to the four songs together, I mean, for some people who don't know, obviously three of them are your compositions. That's to the moment, words on a page, and from the turn of a card. And that's as in the track The Gift of Love, which you've just mentioned is more of a band collective. Um yeah. these are absolutely stunning pieces of music. They really are. Oh, well, that's, that's good. I mean, I spent quite a long time, you know, in the writing, getting, the, getting the, the, the structure of the songs right. And I was very conscious when I went into the studio with Yes. I mean, I, I mean as you mentioned, the album I did with, with Gordon Giltrip, I've, been, I've worked out next year as my, my 21st anniversary of, of releasing records through, you know, internationally. I've sort of been working in music for years, but my first record that came out on a proper record label was, was, was going to be 21 years next year. Oh, wow. And so I sort of, I've, I've written quite a lot of music for lots of different people and lots of different, and played lots of different bands and, and released lots of records that have different styles to them. But when I went into the studio with Yes, I thought to myself, you know, I discarded a lot of material because I thought it's just, it just doesn't have that core element of what I think Yes should have. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and these pieces, to me, they did have that element of what Yes needed. And then when I was in the studio, I mean, one thing I'll always say about the guys from Yes is that they are they're very generous musicians. Um, you know, nobody just goes, oh, it's my song. I'm going to spend all my time on my song. Uh, and, oh, I'll just put a bit of guitar on yours. You know, everybody sits there and works on each other's ideas and pieces of music. And, um, you know, so when I was working on the track, you know, uh, Words on a Page, for example, um, I knew in my head that I wanted that song to have that classic yes interplay of lines creating the music rather than chords. You know, yeah. a lot of people who, who may listen know how, how music is structured and you have chords and melodies on top. And a lot of the time you'll have a guitar playing a chord and somebody sings and you, the movement of the chords and the melodies creates the song. What yes tends to do a lot of the time is have interplay of lines where someone is playing just a line and someone else is playing a line and someone else is playing a line and no one's ever actually playing a chord, but these lines intertwining together creates an identity for the piece of music. And so I really wanted to do that with words on a page. That's why there's lots of nice acoustic guitar lines and just a piano line and the bass is moving around and then with a melody line on top and it gives it that, that, that sort of yes element that, that is something that yes do very, very well. Um, and then obviously, I, you know, it's like being a kid in the sweet shop. I've got Steve Howard there who plays wonderful acoustic guitar who also has a steel guitar sat to the side of him and it's like you know what is that the steel guitar you played on Andrew and I oh yeah couldn't use that on this could you <laughs> it's just, it's... <clears throat> and so I was sort of a bit in my element really and you know Chris was there sitting there he said you know what he said I'm not going to play the Rick and Backer on this and I was like what he said I'm going to I've got an acoustic bass I'll play acoustic bass for the first half and I'd never heard of Chris playing acoustic bass oh, except wow. for like the yes acoustic session and it was lovely you know everybody was just going oh and no, I'll do this and then when we got to the gift of love Alan was saying well, I might play it in a four beat, but I'll play it in a slow four beat, so effectively I'm only playing it at snare on the first. And you get all this wonderful interplay from musicians, which is why I think it, it does have that yes feel. And the one thing I've always said with this record um, is I think it's a happy record. You can hear that it's five people that were enjoying working together. Oh, yeah, definitely. Uh, and, I, I, and I think that comes across in records. Some records you can hear, and they're a little bit... You can tell the record was hard work. This one this one sort of, I think, has a, a, a lightness to it, which is people wanting to play together. Oh, oh, without a doubt, without a doubt. I mean, and it's one of those... I said, I mean, I said the first track, as I said, I heard was To The Moment, and I just thought, that that is just brilliant. I think it's a great song. But when you hear the other songs, as well, like you've just mentioned, words on the page, but from the turn of a card as well. Th these are these are fantastic uh, pieces of music. They really are great stuff. And the one thing I, I think now, listening to them, I'm obviously if we'd never known they existed, we'd be none the wiser. But the fact no. that they've come out now and the reaction to them is super. I know a lot of like big Yes fans, and and, and they're they're lapping this up, and and it's just incredible. But the one thing that people have asked me to say to you, um, that when they found out I was going to be talking to you, is, is there more? Are there more than the four tracks? You know, is the possibility there is other stuff that could see the light of day at some point? Um, I don't think there's anything else that's left that is original or would, is original in a good enough state for people to hear. Yeah. You know, Steve and I worked on some other ideas. I've got some rough demos of some bits and pieces, but nothing that I... I'm, I'm a bit critical when it comes to releasing stuff. Yeah, I won't release stuff unless I really feel it's good enough. The only other stuff that we've got is... Um, 
I do still have all the original demos, of course, that I worked on with the band for everything. So I've got the original versions of some of the songs from that ended up on Fly From Here with my keyboards all over them and Benoit singing. I've got, you know, Steve's Don't Take No and... We did an acoustic version of Chris's Man You See In Me track. Um, and I've got, you know, uh, the demo versions of these songs, which are different in arrangement. And, you know, uh, I've got an acoustic version of Words on a Page, which is different arrangements. So maybe at some point, some of those those demos might see the light of day. But I did, I did R a lot about <clears throat> whether to, 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 to put all the demos on as well. And I, I sat down with Steve. And one thing Steve's always said is when we, when we put a record out, you, you always try and aim to make the best it can be. Yeah. And we sort of talked about it for a while and then came to the conclusion that if we put loads of demos on there, you, you dilute the impact of the song. And it could be a You're bit almost... disjointed, couldn't it? Because you've got complete songs and then you've got, as you said, demos. And it's... Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I totally totally get where you're coming from with that. And us as and these, these four songs, it is... You know, it's it's. I, I love the fact because I love the uh, the live in Leon album anyway because I really enjoyed that tour. I thought it was uh, it was a magnificent tour, and to have this now as a box set with the brand new four tracks as well, I think it just makes it just makes for an absolutely superb collection. It really does. It's it's very nice to have the period of the band encapsulated in live and studio form. Yeah. Because you know when we went out on tour with Yes, when Benoit and I joined the band back in two thousand and eight, you know they were just thinking of doing they were coming up for 40 years and you know Benoit and I were in the band I mean I actually joined the band before Benoit because I joined when John was in the band we just never got to to record because John got ill so technically I was in the band from all all of you know all throughout 2008 even though we didn't start touring until the end of the year John and I were working on studio tracks um up until you know until he got ill and so, so 2008, 2009, 2010, and, and half of 2011, I was, you know, we were very active with the band. And so I sort of think, well, that period of the band with Benoit, you know, wasn't quite 10% of the band's history at the time, but it was, you know, it was, a, it was a fair chunk of the band's history. And it seemed a shame that it was, I wouldn't say getting written out of the history books, but it was because we only did a live album, it kind of seemed to have less impact with, with people. Um, and so the fact that people can now hear that we were a recording um, entity as well, and people can hear, you know, the, the, the quality of the material that we were coming up with i think it, it, it sort of almost validates that period quite nicely it makes people go actually you know what that was that was that was a good time for the band it was i mean to be honest that's as i mean i remember seeing the uh, the show in birmingham on on that tour and i thought it was fantastic it was an absolutely superb uh, a superb tour i really really enjoyed it was it was it a good time did you enjoy your time with in yes oh i loved it yeah i mean symphony hall was it Birmingham? yeah place? yeah that was the one yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think my mum came to that, and I remember thinking halfway through the show, I thought, this must be a bit weird for her. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because, I mean, to be honest, the whole thing of, of your time in Yes is a little bit interesting, because as you said, you started the ba- it started in the band, and, you know, John was there, and then all of a sudden, yeah. by the time you went out on tour, it was Benoit, um, and, and so it must have been quite an interesting time that you start with one vocalist and then end up with another one. Yeah, it was it was a bit. I mean, I was obviously disappointed not to play with John because yeah. you know he's he's wonderful and you know he has a, a huge part in Yes's history. But I'd also worked with Steve many times. You know, Steve had played on one of my solo records and I'd played on one of his solo records. So Steve and I had a history going back as well. Uh, and so the opportunity to go out and play this wonderful music with you know musicians that I you know really admired was you know it was just a dream come true. And you know, getting up on stage, you know, particularly by 2009, we were very 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 tight, well-rehearsed, well, you know, very cohesive band. Oh, yeah. And yeah. Chris said to me when we were, what used to happen is Chris and I would sit up on the tour bus. I'm a bit of an insomniac and Chris always stayed up late. So everyone else would go to bed and Chris and I would be sat up on the bus just chatting. And he'd say, he said, I remember, I can distinctly remember. He looked at me and he said, he said, you know, what? I don't think there's one piece of yes music that this, this lineup couldn't do justice to. And I took that as a, like, the biggest compliment I could get, you know, is Chris Squire telling me that, you know, we could do anything. Which was which was lovely, and then he said, "I think I'd like us to record an album." You know, Steve was a, a little more reticent at first. He wanted to ensure that we were gelling properly before we we, we embarked on that, and and he felt that after that European tour, you know, 2010, he said, "I think we're you know it'd be great for us to start talking about some ideas." And yeah. so you know, so Steve and I would meet up. So it was a it was a obviously it was great fun to play on stage and, and meet all the fans and, and chat to people, but it genuinely was a happy time in the band. I mean, Chris was um, with his with his wife. Scotty and they were having a baby. The baby was born midway through the first tour. 
Um, Steve was enjoying sort of revitalizing the band. And, and it was nice because, you know, with John and Dad in the band, there was always the five of them. And I know there were, you know, I don't know all the ins and outs, but I know that there were conflicts. I mean, I think most people know that Yes has lots of conflicts. That shouldn't come as a huge spoiler to anyone. Um, but Chris... Steve and Alan were working very hard together because they knew they didn't have John. So they had to work together to make it work and to make it successful. They, they, you know, they couldn't let maybe some of the, the things that had annoyed them about each other in the past get in the way. They had to focus on being a unit. And they played phenomenally well. You know, they were, people didn't just turn up at rehearsals and go, yeah, I'll do. You know, it really was down to the nth degree of getting everything just right. And so it was, it was, it was very, it was challenging, but it was lovely. And, you know, we'd always, you know, we'd sit down and have meals together and everybody would sort of sit down with each other at different times you know i'd go out with chris and scotty i'd have lunch with steve i'd go out for a drink with alan and then alan and ben while with me too you know there was a lot of you know interplay between everybody um and i thought that wasn't the sort of stories i'd heard from yet so that's why i think it was a particularly happy time for everybody it was it was great and that's as i mean i, I have fond memories of that that's uh, that show in birmingham i thought it was absolutely brilliant um the one thing about it is uh, while you were in the band having the name wakeman there's always going to be comparisons did did you find that sort of i mean i read a few things online and stuff like did you find that a little frustrating or did you, did you let it wash over you I, I think it comes with the territory to be <laughs> honest with you i think there's you know that that is a phenomenal keyboard player there's no doubt about it he's you know he's, he's just he has a history he has a legacy and he has <clears throat> you know a, an immense amount of people that love what he does uh, and so what what you know what what can you do you 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 could try and spend your life pretending it's not there or you can spend your life thinking well the Wakeman name is kind of a its own sort of brand and you know we have to uphold the the, the quality that people expect from it um and so if people you know people are always going to compare you to your dad there's nothing you can do about that um so you just have to let that wash over you but all I always did was think you know I'll try and do the best I absolutely can I'll try and make it as authentic as I can to the record um, which is what you know the band wanted to do, and I will always you know do my absolute best to give the fans what I think they want. And you know, lots of people were so pleasant on the tour; they were so nice. And the fact that people kept coming back to see us with that lineup meant that everyone you know everyone seemed to be happy. Yeah. I, I remember I heard an interview with Chris the other day. Actually, I found this interview with him doing a radio interview, and somebody asked him the question. He said, "What was it like working with Oliver?" And he very nicely said, "Oh, he's an absolute pleasure to work with," which which was lovely. But he said the, the question was, "Is is he like?" Like his dad, and he said, 50% of him is identical, and then 50% he's nothing like him. And he said, you know, and he said, sometimes I'd look across on stage, and it would be like looking at Rick back in '72. He said, and then when we're on a tour bus chatting, he said, it's, it's not like talking to, to Rick at all. It's, you know, it's just Oliver, which was kind of the, a nice way around for it to work. I think it is definitely, definitely. Um, you got what are your plans for 2020? As you said, you're looking at maybe reissuing the Golden Gill Trap album you did uh, a few years back. Yeah, I've got a lot of records actually that are. So I think there's going to be, I'm going to start putting some collections together of, of some of the, the previous records. Um, so I think that's going to be one of the things I'm going to be doing. I've got a couple more coming out this year, actually, which is interesting, which I've got the, um, I've been working a lot with Rodney Matthews, the, the uh, fantasy artist, did a lot of the covers for Magnum. Oh, right. Um, uh, so he's he's actually, he was also a drummer in his early days. He actually sported yes years ago uh, with his band. Um, back in oh, the early, oh, late 60s. And anyway, he's, he's spent the last 15 years or so working with a guitarist in America, working on tunes to go alongside his artwork. Uh, and then he got me involved about three years ago and said, would I play keyboards on a track? And I, I played keyboards on a track. And um, he was really happy with what I did. So he phoned me up and said, would you do some more? Uh, so I ended up playing on the whole album and writing a couple of pieces on that. Uh, and that comes out on December the 13th. Uh, so that's an album called Trinity, which is um, which I'm looking forward to seeing come out. Uh, and then he also does these Christmas cards. Every year he paints a picture to go out on Christmas cards. And he always records a piece of music to go with it. So this year he asked me to get involved. And we've done a sort of prog arrangement of In the Bleak Midwinter. Oh, wow. Should be, should be quite a good fun. That comes out, I think, next week. So, yeah, it's, just been, it's a bit like buses. You don't put anything out for a few years, and then suddenly three records come out all within a, a short period of time. Oh, definitely, definitely. Um, well, it's been an absolute pleasure talking to you. Says, we'll have to sort something out when the uh, when you do the reissue with the Gordon Gill Trap album, because it'd be great to uh, to sort of revisit that album and uh, have a good chat about that, if that's, uh, if that's yeah. okay with you. That would be lovely. The only other thing, I'm, tr I'm hoping next year to try and get to do a live show and play some of these pieces of music. I've stopped trying to put some things together for that because I think that would be really good as well. It would be lovely to go and play this stuff live. It's been a while since I've, I've sort of played live, so I'd like to do that. 
Well, there's definitely something, uh, plenty for us to talk about when we uh, we catch up next time anyway, without a doubt. Uh, Oliver, <laughs> it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you for your time today. It really has been uh, just great sort of talking to you after all these years. And I says, and we will catch up in 2020. That sounds great. Thanks ever so much for calling. Thanks a lot then, Oliver. Take care. Cheers. Bye-bye. 101.8 WCR-FM.